Well, thank you. Uh, as you can see, I, I'm, I'm Bernie Farkas with uh, Autonate. I've got uh, two name badges and two sets of glasses. So, um, anyways, uh, what I want to uh, cover during this presentation is, um, you know, building that uh, uh, Dante network and. Uh, I wasn't in here earlier today, and they may have asked for a show of hands of uh, how many of you have had experience with Dante Controller. How many have used Dante or installed Dante Networks? Okay, how about uh, you're totally brand new to Dante? Okay, and how many of you also have like a Cobranet or Ethersound, you know, other networking experience? Okay. Well, uh, w one of the first things I want to cover is uh, um, a little bit of, of how Dante is actually implemented in you know, the, our manufacturer uh, partner's uh, products because this actually gives you a, a better understanding uh, not only from a design uh, uh, pers perspective, uh, you know, when you're choosing certain products to go into a certain installation or rental that you're doing, but it, it just gives you an overall of some of the, the language that you'll see in our Dante controller software and, and also uh, some of the literature or uh, manuals that you'll see from some of the, the, the manufacturers, uh, you know, what chipset or card is in that particular product. So um, the, we give our manufacturers uh, um, several different ways of doing it, but uh, typically a manufacturer has an audio device. Uh, that device can uh, be, uh, have uh, inputs, it could have outputs. Those inputs and or outputs could be analog, digital, or both. And uh, um, they could also have different functions, you know, um, a microphone, a wireless microphone receiver, a mixer, DSP, uh, stage box, you know, IO, uh, remote IO endpoints and so forth. So what we do is uh, inside uh, that device, the manufacturers can put a little bit of Dante in there, and uh, that little bit of Dante, uh, typically, you know, based again on that product's requirements, will have uh, a number of uh, transmit channels providing uh, signals from this audio device to the Dante network, and then and then it will also have uh, perhaps have some receive channels, so it can bring those signals uh, from other devices on the network into this audio device for mixing signal processing and maybe passing uh, uh, on out the analog or digital uh, local outputs on, on that device. So uh, there's uh, several different hardware ways that we allow that and uh, or provide that. Uh, the most popular at the moment uh, is the Brooklyn 2 card. Uh, the, uh, the first question, you know, why Brooklyn? It's an Australian company. Uh, it, well, they named it after a bridge, so uh, and there's kind of a, a little bit of a theme going on. But the, the Brooklyn Two card, well, there was since there was a Brooklyn Two, there was a Brooklyn One. So this was kind of the, the second generation of a of the card. Uh, it's available to manufacturers as an eight by eight, thirty two by thirty two, or sixty four by sixty four transmit and receive configuration. Uh, it's gigabit and it has the primary and secondary connections on it, okay? So this is uh, um, those devices that you may have uh, seen during some of the breaks next door uh, that do have that redundancy, uh, you know, that, that can be used in a uh, redundant network, uh, typically are using the, uh, the Brooklyn 2 card. Um, about uh, a year and a half, two years ago, we came out with this uh, next uh, chip, also named after a bridge uh, in Australia, uh, the Ultimo chip. This was uh, at first a uh, two in, two out, um, 100 me megabit device uh, that was really designed for uh, you know, power over Ethernet uh, endpoints, uh, you know, I/O, and it was available in a two by two. We did upgrade that last year to, uh, we, we doubled the I.O. count on it, so now it's available with uh, four transmit and four receive channels on that. Uh, and we also added a gigabit uh, switch option. So, um, you know, you've probably seen some wall plates next door uh, and uh, um, with uh, some of the, the, the ones, uh, the wall plates that we're using, the uh, two by two, chip, um, you had to have a home run from that wall plate to the switch. Uh, with this new version of the Ultimo chip, uh, manufacturers will start putting a gigabit switch on, on the back so you can then kind of daisy chain 
your wall plates if you're doing like a, a hotel um, you know a ballroom convention center type design uh, it'll be really handy and it's one of those things again that will save a lot on labor because at the end of the day you know the more uh, sophisticated and the more feature rich we can make these uh, and our manufacturing uh, partners can make these products you know the, the better off you're going to be uh, you know on the job site uh, saving uh, money uh, especially in labor pulling cable and such uh, finally the uh, third method of integrating uh, Dante uh, hardware wise is this new Dante HC chip uh, HC is not a bridge it stands for high capacity so we kind of went off the uh, naming them after uh, bridges format but it can do up to a 512 by 512 transmit and receive uh, gigabit primary and secondary connections and uh, there are several devices uh, out there now that are using it um, uh, there's the, uh, new, the Yamaha uh, Rivage uh, PM10 console. They have a, an option card for that that uses it, and I think they configure it for 128 by 128, I believe. Uh, clear one, there's a converge matrix over there that has uh, a, a transmit and receive count of uh, 256 by 256. So there's, you know, it, we really upped the, uh, the channel count, and uh, again, this should also appeal to those. Um, of you that might be uh, involved in uh, broadcast systems or something like that. So it, it's uh, really going to, you know, make us, uh, give us some new opportunities there. Finally, the, uh, the fourth way of integrating um, Dante into products is using uh, an embedded version of Dante Virtual Sound Card. It's, you know, similar to what you, um, you know, will be downloading um, maybe later on tonight or, or whatever. You know, if you've got the DVS token, you can redeem that. and. Uh, this, uh, you know, Dante Virtual Sound Card it, uh, works for uh, Macs or PCs, uh, Core Audio for the Mac, ASIO, and uh, WDM for Windows. Um, for those of you that uh, are just new to Dante and you're uh, loading a Virtual Sound Card on your Windows PC, just be aware that it, uh, when it starts up, it starts up as an ASIO driver. So if you're trying to use it with, uh, you know, Windows Media Player and such, you need to you know, change that, you know, because that's one of those uh, support calls that we get. It's like I've got Dante Virtual Sound Card running and I, it appears on my Dante controller software, but it's not, I'm not able to play music, you know, so just keep that in mind. Um, uh, some products that actually are uh, using the embedded uh, Virtual Sound Card, um, there's the uh, New Tech Talk Show, which is a Skype, a broadcast Skype interface that uh, recently was introduced at NAB and I believe is now shipping, as well as um, on their uh, TriCaster product, which is, um, uh, you know, kind of a production studio in a box. Uh, you can uh, install Dante Virtual Sound Card uh, on that as well. And that's it for the uh, presentation part.